Hi everyone, this is Jay. Today I'm going to introduce my husband, Michael, who created non-Newtonian calculus with Robert Katz. Non-Newtonian calculus has been applied to image analysis, a lot of economics analysis, and all kinds of good stuff. So I thought Mike should talk about one of his calculi, a very special one that is scale-free. Scales are created by human beings, and there's no way the laws of nature depend on scales. So I feel that a calculus that is scale-free is going to be the most important one. And here's Mike to talk about it. Come on, Mike. Hi, everybody. All right, I'll leave it to you. Okay. I'll see what I can do. The non-Newtonian calculator that Robert Katz and I worked on in starting in 1967 have finally been receiving a pretty good reception. In the last five or ten years, there's been some applications. Two of these particular systems, the geometric calculus and the bigeometric calculus, have been used in a lot of interesting applications. And so today I'm going to talk a little bit about the bigeometric calculus. I don't want to get too much detail into it. It's going to be a short discussion. I'd just like to give you a feel for what it's all about. First of all, the bigeometric calculus has a derivative and an integral, just like the classical calculus that I, I suspect you've studied before. The derivative and integral are kind of inverses of each other. They kind of undo each other in the same, similar way that the classical integral and classical derivatives kind of undo each other. If you've studied calculus before, I think you know what I'm talking about. In the classical calculus, there are certain functions that are really important, and you know what they are. They're the linear functions. The linear, for example, the linear functions are used as tangents to curves and used to approximate curves. The bigeometric calculus has another class of functions that's used in a similar way. It's the class of power functions. What is a power function? A power function is a function of the form f of x equals cx to the m, where c and m are constants, c is positive, and x is a positive real variable. So for, for example, 2x cubed, x squared, a half x to the minus three. These are all examples of power functions. The power functions play the same role in bigeometric calculus that the linear functions play in classical calculus. In fact, we use power functions in the bigeometric calculus as tangent curves. It turns out that the, the linear functions are not the only functions that can be used as tangents. You can use other classes of functions, and in the bigeometric calculus, we use the power functions. So we, we're using power functions really to approximate other functions. And approximation theory is very important, you know, in science and engineering that solutions to problems don't always come out very simple. And when you have a complicated function that you want to evaluate, uh, sometimes it can't be done. So the next best thing is to try to get a good approximation, as good as you can get. You can use the classical calculus to try that. You can use the bigeometric calculus to try that. Or you could use some other non-Newtonian calculus to try that. And it's not going to be the same in every problem. Certain problems are more suited to the classical calculus and others are more suited to the bigeometric calculus. You have to play around, experiment. It turns out that the 
binary metric derivative of a power function is constant. Now that's just like in classical calculus, the classical derivative of a linear function is constant. And not only is it constant, that constant is the classical slope of that linear function. Well, in the bigeometric calculus, the bigeometric derivative of a power function is also constant. And that constant turns out to be the bigeometric slope of the power function, which you've probably never heard of. It turns out you can define the slope, the bigeometric slope of a power function in a manner that's analogous to the way you define the classical slope of a linear function. I won't go into detail, but it can be done. And it, this slope concept, this bigeometric slope, is extremely useful in bigeometric calculus. Now it turns out that if you take the bigeometric derivative of an arbitrary function, not necessarily a power function, what you get is the bigeometric slope of the power function that's tangent to the given function at the given point. And so this gives you another way of approximating the value of the given function. You can use the bigeometric tangent, the, which is a power function. You can use the power function to approximate the given function. Now when you study classical calculus, you knew that the uh, derivative of the sum of two functions is equal to the sum of their derivatives. For example, you've done problems like this, the derivative of, let's say, x squared plus sine x. How do you do it? You just take the derivative of x squared, then you take the derivative of sine x, and you add them together. And that's the answer. The classical derivative of a sum is the sum of its classical derivatives. And the same is true for the classical integral. The classical integral of a sum is the same as the sum of the classical integrals. It's like term by term integration, which you always do in, in uh, calculus. When you integrate a sum of functions, you just integrate the first, second, and third terms and add them all to get, add all the results together. So the classical calculus is sometimes called an additive system because its derivative and integral are both additive. Now what about the bigeometric calculus? Well, it's not additive. On the other hand, it's multiplicative. So that's really a, a really interesting feature that's quite different from classical calculus. The bigeometric calculus is not additive. But the good news is it's multiplicative. And that's a feature that's very important in certain applications of science and engineering. The bigeometric derivative is multiplicative. In other words, the bigeometric derivative of a product of two functions is the product of their bigeometric derivatives. Same way for the integral. The, the, the bigeometric integral of a product of two functions is equal to the product of the two bigeometric integrals. This is a feature that a lot of scientists and engineers have been using in the last few years. And they find that the phenomenon they're studying in certain cases seems to behave more in a multiplicative way than in an additive way. So in that situation, you want to use the bigeometric calculus, or maybe the geometric calculus, but I won't get into that. Well, okay, I think that concludes our little discussion here. Uh, I just wanted to give you a, a little taste of what the bigeometric calculus 
is all about. If you're, in, if you're really interested, check out our website. It's called Non-Newtonian Calculus. And if you're still interested, check out our book on the bi-geometric calculus. It's called Bi-Geometric Calculus, a System with a Scale-Free Derivative. Thanks a lot for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.